don't know what the Minnesota Vikings have in store for an encore, but Sunday's NFC Championship game against the Philadelphia Eagles for the right to go to the Super Bowl certainly is must-watch TV. The Vikings are favored by three points across most markets for this game. Despite a crazy Sunday in terms of scoring, the total is set at 38 points, so odds makers are clearly expecting a defensive struggle. A quick note before we continue, bet the NFL playoffs with BetDSI.com and get a free $25 wager and a 200% deposit bonus to make the most of your playoff betting. Just click the link below to get all that. When I win, I want my money, I want fast payouts, and I want great customer service. My point is that I get all of that with confidence at BetDSI Sportsbook. The first walk-off touchdown in NFL playoff history not only caused one of the greatest moments in NFL history, but in sports gambling history as well. Some game day Saints bettors won as well as early Vikings bettors. Saints money line players just stared in disbelief. After a 10 minute delay to get enough Saints players back on the field, the Vikings kneeled on a meaningless point after touchdown try that could have created the worst bad beat in NFL history for the Saints plus five and a half crowd. Over betters enjoyed the 29-point fourth quarter. Under betters most certainly did not. The Vikings improved to 14-3 straight up with the win. This game became the ultimate roller coaster ride of emotions in the fourth quarter, as Kai Forbath seemingly eliminated the memories of Vikings kicking disappointments in the past by absolutely stripping a 53-yarder down the middle with 129 left on the clock. We all know what happened in the crazy 89 seconds of the game after that. Lost in the hoopla and ridiculousness was the fact that Case Keenum really wasn't very good in the divisional round. Keenum was 25 of 30 for 318 yards with two touchdowns and an interception that completely turned the tide of the game. Still, he made plays when it mattered with the throw to Diggs and a less heralded throw to Jarius Wright that was upheld on video review and set up the four-bath field goal. Pat Shermer's offensive scheme is predicated on making high percentage throws to get guys like Stefan Diggs and Adam Thielen into open space to rack up yards after the catch. That was clearly the case in this game. It will be something that the Eagles will have to focus on. The Vikings never really got the running game going with just 95 yards on 29 carries. The Vikings did, however, control the game by going 10 of 17 on third down. That is typically a good measure of play design, and Minnesota's success on third down, both offensively and defensively, has been the deciding factor of this season. The Vikings were third offensively. The Saints were just two of nine on third down. Drew Brees made some ridiculous throws in the fourth quarter, including his fourth and ten toss to Willie Sneed. But the Vikings did a pretty good job on the money down in terms of forcing the Saints into field goal attempts or punts. New Orleans never got the running game going with just 3.3 yards per carry on 24 tries. Philadelphia will have to run the rock to have success. The Eagles don't have Drew Brees, they have Nick Foles. Philadelphia also doesn't really have a Michael Thomas, and few teams have an Alvin Kamara. Those are the guys that really created the chunk plays for the Saints. Minnesota sacked Brees twice and had a couple of picks. One injury that really changed the complexion of the game and got lost in the shuffle was the one that knocked Andrew Sendejo out with a concussion. Sendejo had a pick in four tackles. He also appeared to lose consciousness and is in the league's concussion protocol. If he can't go to play, that is a big loss, though clearly not the same degree that it would be against a guy like Drew Brees. The Philadelphia Eagles had a goal line stand in their 15-10 win to survive in advance over the Atlanta Falcons. Philadelphia has the luxury of an extra day of rest after playing on Saturday, so we'll see what that means, especially with the nature of Minnesota's win plus travel from the Twin Cities to the city of brotherly love. Philadelphia is now 14-3 straight up and 11-6 against the number with that outright upset win as the first number one seed to be an underdog in the divisional round. The Eagles find themselves an underdog again in this spot, but this time north of the key number of three. It wasn't pretty for the Eagles, but it doesn't have to be at this time of year. Win and keep playing, that's all that matters. Nick Foles didn't hurt their team, and that was the biggest reason why the Eagles advanced. Foles was actually pretty good by going 23 of 30 for 246 yards with zero touchdowns, but zero picks, and just one sack taken. He did fumble twice, but both were recovered by his own team. 
the Eagles actually fumbled four times in the game and lost two. The running game only managed 96 yards on 32 attempts, as Philadelphia's best runs came from wide receiver Nelson Aguilar. The conservative game plan was just enough because LeGarrette Blount scored a short touchdown and Jake Elliott made all three field goals. But will a similar blueprint work against the Vikings? The game plan for Foles was a lot like the one that the Vikings used with Case Keenum most of the year. High percentage throws designed to get some yards after the catch. Both Shermer and Doug Peterson come from the Andy Reid coaching tree, so that shouldn't surprise anybody. The Eagles' defense was terrific in the win over the Falcons. Atlanta was just 4 of 13 on third down, cashed in on only one of three red zone trips, and managed just 4.8 yards per play. The Falcons did run for 4.3 yards per carry, and Julio Jones had a big game. But the Eagles did a good job of limiting big plays for guys not named Jones. Matt Ryan was sacked three times and hit a lot more, and the Eagles held Ryan to just 5.8 yards per pass attempt. The defense was fully aware of what needed to be done, and with the uncertainty of Foles and Jim Schwartz put together a game plan of attack. Philadelphia's ability to get pressure with the base front four allows the back seven to limit big plays. Atlanta's longest play on the day was 24 yards, and the receivers only managed 9.5 yards per catch. Limiting yards after the catch is how to beat the Minnesota Vikings, so we'll see if the Eagles have the necessary speed to bottle up Adam Thielen and Stefan Diggs. The Saints could not, and it eventually cost them the game. The Vikings should win this game, and we expect them to advance to the Super Bowl and be the first team to play in its home stadium in history. But the Eagles should keep this thing low-scoring and competitive throughout. These two teams have a ton of similarities, since Shermer and Peterson come from the Andy Reid coaching tree, and both Mike Zimmer and Jim Schwartz are excellent defensive minds. George Edwards has done brilliant work as the Vikings' D.C., if, and this is a big if, Andrew Sandejo can play, we will be more interested in taking Minnesota. Seeing how much the Vikings struggled when he went out is a huge concern. The Eagles don't have the firepower of the Saints, but he's a high-impact player and a sure tackler in space. There's no reason to jump at this line, as it should be here throughout the week. Our picks and predictions, as things stand, is for the Philadelphia Eagles at plus three. Click over now to BetDSI.com to get $100 free. When you sign up with the deposit today, you can get a 100% deposit bonus. That's $200 in betting action for just $100. Start making cash right now with NFL or NCAA football betting. BetDSI.com has all your favorite sports to bet on today.